good afternoon children hope you all are fine and you are doing uh, necessary precautions to be safe in this pandemic and uh, at the same time you are doing your classes regularly and you are uh, doing your studies properly uh, hopefully by 10th 10th may you will be getting your, uh, your books uh, it will be delivered to your home but chemistry books you will not get because it's not delivered yet okay so this uh, books you will get afterwards later you will uh, get your chemistry books and, uh, and uh, another thing I want to uh, tell you that uh, regarding the portion now no need to uh, worry about your portions uh, in proper time you will be informed so uh, as, uh, as we are doing the classes and all so you just follow the classes regularly that will be enough okay whatever uh, chapters are being taught that will be there in your exam so you just go through that okay no need to worry about the portion now okay so uh, today we are going to revise uh, the chapter which we did uh, in our previous class uh, it's a uh, element compound and mixture so the mixture portion we will be revising today okay so let's start and uh, hopefully uh, that uh, in uh, study material portion in uh, in our last class uh, we have uh, provided the curriculum we just go through the curriculum that is very important and uh, whatever things are there uh, we will be doing that only okay maybe in your book some extra things are there that you can uh, do but the main thing which we will be doing that is uh, we will be following the curriculum okay so uh, that that portion you properly you just uh, go through whatever things are there in the curriculum so let's start so today we are going to discuss mixture characteristics of mixture types of mixture differences between compound and a mixture separation techniques and uh, sorry concept of atom and concept uh, concept of molecule that we will be doing afterwards and we will be uh, doing principle of separation uh, on which basis on which principle we will be choosing the separation techniques concept of atom and molecule uh, we will be doing afterwards okay in our next class so up to separation of mixtures we will be doing today so definition of mixture it's a mixture can be defined as kind of matter which is formed by mixing two or more pure substances there may be two or more than two pure substances may be mixed together it may be element or compound or both okay in any proportion proportion is uh, not fixed here as uh, we have got in uh, compound proportion uh, there will be a fixed ratio or proportion of the components but here in mixture uh, proportion can be changed so this is the uh, difference between mixture and uh, compound we will say Achha. such that they do not undergo any chemical change and retain their individual properties uh, in between the elements or compounds or the components of mixture there will be no chemical change they will uh, not attach with chemical bond or chemically uh, these are not arranged uh, these are not attached we will say okay and they retain their individual property that means in the in a mixture uh, all the components will show their individual properties so this is another difference between mixture and compound so therefore mixture as there are uh, more than two uh, two or uh, more than two substances are there so these are impure substances we will say okay mixtures are impure substances so what are the characteristic of mixture 
a mixture consists of two or more pure substances that exist together without any chemical combination between them a mixture may be homogeneous or heterogeneous you know what is homogeneous and heterogeneous uh, later uh, again we will be uh, discussing this too okay so mixture may be homogeneous or heterogeneous both may be there the components of mixture vary in their proportions there the proportions are not fixed they may vary mixtures do not have fixed melting and boiling points they depend on the proportions of the component present in them as the proportion of uh, of the component is not fixed so depending on that depending on the proportion uh, mixtures melting and boiling point will vary the components of mixtures can be separated by simple physical methods so using simple physical methods like boiling evaporation or uh, freezing heating uh, these are simple uh, physical methods we will say so using that we can separate the component of mixture usually no energy change takes place during the formation of mixture uh, no uh, heat uh, generally evolution of heat or absorption of heat is uh, uh, we will not uh, get during the formation of mixtures and mixtures cannot be represented by any chemical formula why because in a mixture there will be two or more uh, pure substances two or more substances are there so we cannot uh, represent a mixture by any chemical formula any particular formula is not applied uh, cannot be uh, written for mixtures as it is a uh, mixture of two or more uh, chemical substances okay two or more substances next see this is the type of mixture homogeneous and heterogeneous in homogeneous by the uh, this term homo means same or even uniform okay the components here in homogeneous mixture the components are uniformly distributed throughout its volume and cannot be seen separately in tap water or in air or in sugar solution uh, these are the mixtures but here we cannot uh, separately we cannot see the particles okay uh, after getting the sugar solution means the solution of sugar in water we cannot see the sugar particles separately that means they will be mixed completely evenly so this is a homogeneous mixture whereas heterogeneous mixture the components are not uniformly distributed throughout its volume and can be easily seen separately okay uh, so particles in heterogeneous mixture the uh, component of the mixture can be seen can be uh, distinguished separately okay examples are mud and water sand and stone oil and water etc next see from the figure you can uh, easily understand the heterogeneous and homogeneous mixture the difference between them see in both the cases we are having the purple color ball and the green color ball okay in both homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture but in heterogeneous mixture you can see the number of purple balls are more in this part in, in this part of the mixture whereas the green color balls are more in this part that means these are not distributed evenly uniformly okay the concentration of or the number of purple colored balls are more in this portion and the number of uh, green color balls are more in this portion okay whereas in homogeneous mixture all the balls are uh, spread separate uh, all the balls are spread evenly uniformly okay in every portion of this in every corner of the mixture you you can get the same composition you can get the same proportion understood so this is the homogeneous mixture where the particles are evenly distributed see these are some examples homogeneous mixture 
air, salt, uh, water. Air is a mixture of different gases and these are mixed homogeneously. Salt water, sugar water, brass, solution brass, it's a uh, it's an alloy. Okay. It's an alloy of copper and zinc. Solutions, different solutions. Uh, these are also homogeneous mixture. See, these are the solutions if, uh, here. We, these are uniformly mixed. All the particles are uniformly mixed. We cannot uh, separately, uh, we cannot see any particle here. Okay, next for homogeneous mixture, soil uh, components are uh, uh, unevenly distributed, unevenly mixed together standard water mixture here also the composition is not same everywhere uh, as sand is uh, heavy in weight so that will settle down at the bottom and the water will be uh, on the upper layer of the sand okay so you can see this these are the sand and all these are the this uh, in this food we will say uh, suppose it's a, a salad here all the substances all the uh, veggies are mixed ununiformly okay unevenly so uh, somewhere you will get the more uh, reddish color veggies and all so these are not uniformly distributed so this is also can be a heterogeneous mixture see the differences between compound and mixture the first one is Compound is a pure substance whereas mixture is an impure substance. Compounds are always homogeneous but mixtures may be homogeneous or heterogeneous. A compound has a fixed composition because it is formed when two or more pure substances chemically combine in a definite ratio by mass. In a compound, the uh, substances or the components they will chemically combine in a definite ratio by mass so there will be a fixed composition fixed formula for a compound but for a mixture there are no fixed composition that is it is formed by mixing two or more substances in any ratio without any chemical reaction there will be no chemical reaction between the mixture uh, between the component of the mixture Next, formation of a compound involves a change in energy. Always energy change is must for a, uh, during formation of a compound. It, energy may evolve or it may absorb. But for mixture, formation of a mixture doesn't involve any change in energy. Okay, though some exceptions are there but generally we will not get any energy change during the formation of mixture. Next, compounds have a fixed, uh, have a specific set of properties and mixtures do not have any specific set of properties. Components of compounds can be separated only by complex chemical process. Uh, uh, the compounds, the components of compound can, cannot be separated easily. So, for this, to separate the component, we have to use the complex chemical processes. Okay, there are different chemical processes are there that you will get in the higher classes. Okay, uh, to pass, uh, we can uh, pass electricity to separate them. This we can take for uh, to separate the component of water. To get uh, hydrogen and oxygen gas from water, we have to use the uh, we have to pass electricity through this. So this is called electrolysis. So this kind of complex processes we have to use to separate the components of compound but for mixture easy or simple physical methods of separation is enough to separate the components of mixture next separation of mixture why we need to separate the mixture okay so the purpose of separation is this two to remove unwanted and harmful substances from mixtures, we uh, have to remove unwanted and harmful substances to obtain pure and useful substances. So, if 
with pure and useful substances any harmful and unwanted substances are mixed then we cannot use those pure substances properly so to get that pure substance or useful substance we need to remove the unwanted particles or substances so we need to separate okay so this is the purpose of separation we will say and principle of separation this depends on this three so this we are going to uh, do okay which process uh, which process of separation we will be choosing to uh, separate uh, a particular type of mixture and what is the reason behind it what is the principle that we will learn next see these are the processes sieving this process we can use to separate uh, solid solid mixtures uh, solid solid uh, mixtures uh, like uh, sand and uh, particles uh, sand and uh, small stones we can use to uh, the mixture of sand and, and small uh, stones that can be uh, separated in this manner to get the fine sand and all okay or uh, sieving generally we use in our kitchen you uh, may have seen that uh, to separate uh, small uh, stones from rice flour or uh, from wheat flour uh, we can or uh, to separate the husk from wheat we can use the sieving process here through this uh, this is a porous plate we will say so the fine powder or the useful substances generally that will pass through this holes but the unwanted substances like stones and all that will be uh, that cannot pass through this as these are bigger in size so they will left behind in this uh, part okay in this uh, sieving tray and all so here this is the uh, useful substances will, uh, which we will collect afterwards and here the unwanted particles and all that will be discarded after the after saving this uh, you may have seen at your home okay in our kitchen we uh, frequently use this this sieve next sedimentation here if the uh, particle if the uh, uh, two particles uh, in between the two particles if one particle is heavy in weight and another is light in weight then we can choose the sedimentation process here if we add water in this then both are both uh, see here we have taken sawdust and sand so this sawdust and sand these two are insoluble these two are uh, these two cannot mix together and if we add water in it then sawdust will as it is light in weight so it will float on the upper layer you can see this sawdust floating and the sand it will settle down as sand is heavy in weight so this process is called the settling down of the heavy particles uh, because of gravity this uh, the process is called sedimentation sediment we will say okay this sands which settles down or the substance which settles down at the bottom that we will call as sediment okay and the particle and the water or the solvent which is there above the sediment that we will call as supernatant liquid so this process is called sedimentation next now to separate the uh, sediment from the supernatant liquid we have to use this decantation process what is that uh, just uh, we will be tilting the beaker a bit and uh, without disturbing the sediment slowly we will be transferring the supernatant liquid to another beaker using this glass rod okay you can see this it's a glass rod so uh, just slowly uh, through this glass rod we will be transferring the liquid from the beaker okay from this beaker to another beaker so here we will be getting the sediment and uh, supernatant liquid and the sediment will uh, left behind in the previous beaker 
So this process is called decanting or decantation. Next, see separating mixture using evaporation. So this process we will be using for those substances which are uh, like salt and water. That means which uh, will be dissolved in water, uh, which is soluble in water. The substances which are soluble in water to separate those from water we can use this evaporation process salt or sugar also we can separate in this manner so what we will do in this evaporating dish we will be taking the salt and water solution and we will be heating that now as water vaporizes water evaporates uh, after certain time after uh, when the temperature of this mixture will rise up and after um, reaching to 100 degree centigrade temperature water will evaporate okay and as the salt is uh, non volatile it will remain in this evaporating dish salt will uh, salt cannot vaporize in that manner so it will remain in the evaporating dish so after uh, the evaporation of all the water we will see the solid sand remains in this evaporating dish so this process is called evaporation next filtration this process we will be using for separating solid liquid mixture so here this is the filter paper we will say it's a uh, paper it's a particular type of paper which uh, and all the papers are having some uh, pores okay that may not be uh, seen through naked eyes but pores are there now when we will be you can see the suspension of chalk in water chalk particles they cannot get mixed in water so they will be floating in water now when we will be passing the water passing the uh, chalk in water solution means the mixture of chalk and water through this filter paper the pores of the filter paper allowed only the water okay through this because the particles of water these are very small so they can pass through the filter paper but as suspension of chalk or the, or the chalk particles these are uh, the size of the chalk particles are more so they will get stuck to this uh, in this uh, pores of the filter paper so they cannot pass through that understood so the uh, particles as their sizes are more uh, bigger size is there so they will get stuck in this filter paper and the water will pass through it so in this manner we can separate the chalk dust and water now the water which we we, uh, we are collecting in this manner this is called filtrate see it's called filtrate and the chalk which will get stuck in this filter paper that is called residue see this is the chalk is the residue so through this funnel we will be pouring the mixture and this process is called filtration we are filtering this so this this process is called filtration this uh, uh, frequently we will be we generally do at our home in giving the formation of tea and all okay so tea leaves as these uh, as the tea leaves are bigger in size so they cannot pass through the stainer the pores of the stainer only the water can pass through it so this is very common process we have seen all all of us have uh, seen this okay so uh, this is also filtration process next sublimation so this process we will be choosing for those substances which will show sublimation if one of the particle one of the component will show sublimation then we can choose this process to separate the mixture separate the components of mixture so what is sublimation sublimation is nothing but the process where directly from solid state the uh, substance will convert to gaseous state okay so without passing through the liquid state 
we know there are three states solid liquid and gas so directly from solid state we will be getting the uh, vapor state like for camphor okay or naphthalene ball from solid only we cannot see the liquid phase we, it will directly vaporizes and we will be getting the uh, gaseous phase or vapor phase of naphthalene ball or camphor okay in this manner there are some other substances too which will show sublimation so here we have taken this ammonium chloride this sublimes okay now the mixture of ammonium chloride and uh, suppose we can take sand or we can take common salt uh, so the mixture of common salt and ammonium chloride we can separate in this manner so here we have taken in a in a china dish we have taken the mixture of ammonium chloride and uh, common salt sodium chloride now sodium chloride cannot show sublimation but ammonium chloride shows so when we will be heating this mixture ammonium chloride vaporizes from solid it will uh, convert to the vapor state and we can get the the vapor will uh, get deposit in this inner wall of the funnel okay we have taken a in, uh, funnel and we have kept it in inverted manner and here we have added some cotton plug so that the vapor cannot comes out now see the ammonium chloride solidified see the deposit of ammonium chloride the at first we will be getting the ammonium chloride vapors it will vaporize first and then we will be getting the solid ammonium chloride in this part in this inner wall of the inverted tube or the funnel but common salt as it will not show sublimation so it will remain in the china dish only so in this manner we can separate ammonium chloride and sodium chloride common salt now we will be going through the principle of separation see the solid solid heterogeneous mixture for them we will be taking this method of separation hand picking first of all so what is the principle of separation when the substance to be separate is is large enough to be picked up by hand and forms a small portion of the mixture that means when the particles when the unwanted particles will be uh, the quantity of the unwanted particles are less and they can be easily recognized and can be uh, and are large enough to be picked up okay by hand so then we, we, we can use this hand picking process uh, this method of separation the examples are small stones from rice and pulses that we do generally at our home small stones if the number of stones are less and uh, the stones are big enough to uh, picked up to be picked up by hand then we can use this process to separate small stones from rice and pulses next winnowing process so this winnowing process we will be using to uh, when the mixture contains light and heavy particles okay so one of the component is light in weight and another is heavy in weight that can be uh, separated by this winnowing process so this we can use to separate rice and husk sand and dry leaves like this okay so dry leaves or husk these are light in weight so they can be blown away uh, blown away by the by air and all but rice and sand as these are heavy in weight so they will uh, just uh, just without uh, any uh, movement and all in that manner it will directly uh, because of gravity it will directly come to the it will fall down directly or uh, just uh, right away uh, from a, okay when we will be doing this in the process so next sieving 
the, when the components of mixture are of different sizes that we can then we can use this sieving process so rice powder and small uh, stone particles that can be separated in this manner magnetic separation when one of the component is magnetic in nature so iron and sulfur that we will be uh, uh, that can be separated in this process okay so here iron is in this uh, mixture of iron and sulfur iron is uh, magnetic substance so if we pass or uh, if we move a magnet through the mixture then iron will get stuck in the magnet but sulfur will left behind in the container only so it, it cannot get stuck uh, sulfur but iron will get stuck so in this manner we can separate iron and sulfur this process is called magnetic separation sublimation just now we did when one of the components can sublime so sand and ammonium chloride or any any other substance which will show sublimation uh, it may be camphor maybe naphthalin maybe iodine so to separate those substances also we can use this process a solvent extraction method it's not there in uh, so this in, uh, number if no need to do this okay but uh, here one of the solid is soluble uh, is soluble in the liquid okay suppose sand and salt so what we do generally just I'm telling this once but uh, this one is not there in your syllabus in your curriculum it's not there uh, sand and salt so in between this two salt will get dissolved in water but sand will remain undissolved so after that by uh, decanting the solution salt and water mixture then uh, the in the supernatant liquid we can say salt and water will be there and sand will remain as uh, sand will remain as sediment okay so in this manner we can separate this two using a particular solvent where one of the component is soluble in that solvent or liquid next for solid liquid heterogeneous mixture sedimentation and decantation when the solid component is much heavier than the liquid component solid component is much heavier than the liquid component like sand and water rice and water and then sand and rice as these are heavy in weight so they will sink they will settle down they will settle down but water will form the upper part of the container upper part of the uh, in the beaker it will form the upper layer okay this loading process this is again it's not there so no need to do this this is just to fasten the sedimentation process by using uh, different like alum we can use to uh, purify water so to purify or to separate the mud from water we can use alum so that will uh, make the sedimentation process faster filtration when the solid particles are insoluble in the liquid and complete separation is needed okay so the particles of chalk powder and water particles of chalk powder we can separate through filtration or uh, sawdust and water that also can be separated by using this filtration so here chalk powder will remain as it will remain in the filter paper or sawdust it will remain in the filter paper and it will uh, form the residue we will be calling chalk powder or sawdust as residue and water as filtrate next solid liquid homogeneous mixture evaporation is the technique so when a solid is soluble in a liquid to form a solution like salt from sea water we can separate in this manner in this process Achha, crystallization and distillation these two are not there in a syllabus so no need to do this so only evaporation from solid liquid homogeneous mixture only evaporation you can do okay so this is all for today now we will be 
uh, doing the worksheet which was provided in our previous class but in just uh, one second you just go through this whether you are understood or not okay and uh, bring a pen and paper because you need that during the discussion of worksheet okay so let's do that we will be going for worksheet now see this was given in our last class write the symbol of the following these are very easy you know you can do your own chlorine cl sodium na neon any calcium ca sulfur s so these are the symbols next classify the following as element or compound so you can make two column so the elements you will be writing in the element column and the compounds among this five which are the compounds the compounds you will be writing on the compound column so first one is water so this is a compound so in compound column you will be writing water oxygen this is an element so you will be writing that in element column silver this is also an element so in element column wood this is a compound salt this is a compound okay next name the following so these are the exceptions or uh, these, uh, these are very very much important okay so you have to put more stress on this these are very important okay so uh, a liquid non-metal that is bromine a liquid non-metal that is bromine next a liquid metal it will be uh, mercury non metal which is good conductor of electricity a non metal which is a good conductor of electricity that will be graphite it's a form of carbon next a brittle metal that will be zinc a solid non metal that may be uh, phosphorus or sulfur you can write okay so carbon also can be a solid non metal So this is so this is uh, all for today, students. You just uh, as you are doing, I know you are doing your studies properly. So you you just keep on doing that. Uh, everything will be fine, hopefully, and we will be meeting soon. Uh, we can do our regular classes in our school and all. So just uh, let's pray uh, so that uh, as soon as possible we can start that. Okay, so till then we have to continue our classes in this manner. Uh, so we will be doing. Okay, so take uh, very good care of yourself and uh, just uh, follow all the uh, safety measures which are there, which are instructed to do and uh, just have a good day, do your studies properly, okay, thank you.